we will be presenting our pearls for optimizing osteochondral allograft biologic healing and clinical success. Here is an overview of our key pearls. The fresh donor graft is open and gradually rewarmed to room temperature and saline. When the graft is cold preserved, the metabolic activity of chondrocytes is suppressed. Our data demonstrates that gradual rewarming of the allograft improves metabolic activity and decreases nitric oxide production as compared to rapid rewarming. We ream our graft while it is submerged in saline to reduce thermal necrosis. Our unpublished cellular analysis demonstrates that submerging the graft during harvest improves cartilage cell viability compared to traditional technique with bulb irrigation. It is critical to optimize the depth of subchondral bone on both the donor and recipient sides. We typically aim for a total plug depth of 5 to 8 millimeters, including the articular cartilage surface. One of the primary reasons to minimize bone depth is to reduce immunogenicity. The subchondral bone is known to be the most immunogenic portion of the graft and does not necessarily heal with full creeping substitution compared to lyophilized allogeneic bone. With deeper bone plugs, there are more marrow elements, and the deeper portions of the graft are harder to access during graft preparation. However, bone depth less than 4 to 5 millimeters may also be associated with increased cyst formation, so the bone should also not be too shallow. We take care to aim for this depth throughout the graft at each of the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. While in some locations, such as the femoral condyles, you may have a uniform graft depth, depth may vary greater in the more contoured locations of the trochlea and patella. Understanding the orientation of the plug is critical for proper orthogonal graft placement. We then prepare the bone. The edges of the bone may be chamfered if preferred to facilitate graft insertion and grooves are created within the bone with an oscillating saw. Doing this may decrease the force of impaction, improve deep zone access with graft cleaning techniques, and facilitate removal of the graft if necessary. The next step is to utilize high pressure pulse lavage with normal saline. When utilizing the pulse lavage, high flow increases the marrow space compared to standard flow, and research suggests that there is an ongoing reduction in marrow elements for up to two minutes of pulse lavage applied to the subchondral bone of fresh osteochondral allografts. Following pulse lavage, we utilize pressurized carbon dioxide to additionally remove immunogenic elements from the graft. Our research shows that pressurized carbon dioxide, in addition to pulse lavage, significantly reduces marrow elements in each of the superficial, middle, and deep zones of the graft relative to pulse lavage alone, improving bone porosity. Pressurized carbon dioxide also improves absorption of orthobiologic substances, such as concentrated bone marrow aspirate, with more uniform and deeper graft penetration. In a study by our group, Patients undergoing osteochondral allografts after application of concentrated bone marrow aspirate had fewer large cysts on imaging and a significantly lower rate of subsequent surgeries. We insert our graft gently into the recipient site. We place a suture behind the graft to assist with graft insertion and potential removal to optimize graft positioning. Our research suggests that it is important to limit the use of a mallet and impaction forces on the graft during insertion to maintain cell viability. Our pearls are listed again here to summarize the benefits of each step. By closely adhering to these steps during graft preparation and insertion, we may improve the ability for graft incorporation and healing and ultimately clinical outcomes for our patients. Thank you.